morning, r and &R. Good morning, r and &R. We are just ecstatic and glad to be a part of Refuge and Restoration. r and &R is a place of healing where God shows up. With these wonderful pastors, these wonderful members. I hope it blesses you as it always blesses the two of us. Enjoy. Part of what God wants me to deal with today, well, I believe I've already prayed my way in. <laughs> but God wants to deal with the power of transformation. The power of transformation. Hallelujah. As it relates to discipleship. Pastor has been teaching a lot about discipleship. And to be a disciple of Christ requires a lot of discipline requires discipline. You can't do this haphazardly. You have to be very intentional about discipleship. Even in your own life, as we are discipling others, the Holy Spirit is discipling us. And one of the areas that the Lord wants to disciple in us is our mind. The power of a transformed mind transform to change the form of to change the shape or appearance to metamorphosis as a caterpillar is changed into a butterfly yeah. hallelujah and I'm gonna read this scripture and then you can take your seats and we're gonna flow how the Holy Spirit how the Holy Spirit moves amen in Genesis 1 verses 26 through 27 and when you found your place in the word of God, please respond by saying amen. 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 Glory to God. Father, have your way in this place today. Have your way in this place. In Genesis 1, through 27, it reads as follows. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And you can have your seats. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Again, we're dealing with the power of transformation. In this scripture, it talks about God making man in his image and after his likeness. And that's key because when you come to Christ, when you come to give your life to Jesus, you come to the cross. And at that cross is where you meet transformation. It is where you die. The old man, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So when you come to the cross, is the place of death. And a lot of people don't want to die. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I tell you today, it is to your advantage that you die, that he may live in you. Glory to God. It's in him that you live, move, and have your being in him. And you can't get in him if you're alive. You have to die. A lot of times we just want to decrease so that he can increase. No, no, no. He said die. Get out of my way. Die. 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 Die to yourself. Die to your pain. Die to your hurt. Die to your past. Die to your mistakes. Die to your sorrow. Die to your mistakes. So that you can become alive in me and that my righteousness will be exalted in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Our original image is the image of God, and it looks just like Jesus. He is the type and the pattern that we ought to shape and pattern our lives after. Amen? Amen? Some of us have had good examples in our lives, and some of us have had bad examples. Glory to God. But the greatest example is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. The perfect example. In my own life, I never had the example of a father as I was standing there and we were singing this song 
and it was saying, he knows my name, and, and it moved me to tears, and it really touched me in a very emotional place, and oh, how he walks with me, and oh, how he talks with me, and tells me I'm his aunt. Y'all don't see, that may not, that, you know, that hits me, because when you've been abandoned and rejected, and you've never been told you would love the product of a rape. Some of y'all know my story. The product of a rape, so I wasn't birthed in love, and I came out of the womb feeling rejected. But then to hear a song to say, you know my name. I, I was crying like a baby up here. He knows my name. He tells me that I'm his Oh, oh, how you walk with me. I remember the days in the Navy on that ship being overwhelmed with depression. I couldn't even look a person in their face. I was so depressed and distraught in my mind. I was so suicidal. Can you imagine what it feels like every waking moment to be tormented and in pain? In pain. I couldn't look at nobody without just, I used to walk around with my head down. Because I was so afraid that if you looked into my eyes, you would see that I felt like I was nothing. I had no confidence. So hurt, so broken, looking for relief. I was looking for relief, but what I needed was transformation. See, when you get relief, you come to Christ for relief, you come for the wrong reason. Uh, oh, Lord, I don't want this pain. Uh, Lord, I, I don't want to go through this. God, would you change my circumstance? Would you move in my marriage? And would you move in my health? He said, uh, I come to transform your life. See, we're, we're wanting him to deal with the symptoms when he wants to get down to the core of the problem. He didn't say, I didn't just come to treat your symptoms. I didn't just come to give you relief. I came to give you life and that more abundantly. Glory to God. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Don't talk about I'm your reliever. <laughs> he said, I'm your savior. Glory to God. I'm your redeemer. I'm your healer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So again, when we come to salvation, when we come to him, we come to the cross. But when we become a disciple, we pick up the cross. Ah. Yeah, they ain't hear me. They went, they went over their head. Went over their head, right? Yeah. See, you came to the cross, but when you going to pick up your cross? Oh. I'm going to just let that settle. Just let that. You got to pick up your cross and follow him daily. You have to die daily. See, we want to die occasionally. Oh, that hurt. Oh, it hurt because you still alive. Die. Dead people don't feel... See, y'all want to be all alive and experienced. He said, look, die. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the whole purpose that God has for us is to take us back to the original design before Adam even bit the fruit. Yeah. The first part of you that you will begin to disciple is your mind. And that was the first place that the enemy tormented me the most was in my thought life. In my thought life. He beat me up. They didn't want you. Your mama didn't want you. Your dad ain't never even told you he loved you. You ugly. Don't nobody like you. You imagine walking around hearing that day in and day out and day in and day out, tormenting you, telling you you worthless, you're nothing. 
You, but you know, when you flip that thing, wait a minute, I must have purpose in my life. If you're saying all this about me, God must have some potential and purpose for this life. But I didn't know that at that time because I was dead. I was dead. I was in sin. I was in a repetitive cycle. That cycle was going on and on and on in my life. Even when I got married to my wife, one of the things I was like, Job, one of the things that I greatly feared the most, I had got delivered from the depression, but I thought, Lord, God, when we get married, I don't want to fall back into that depression. I was fearful of that. And what happened? I fell into that depression, and I fell hard. Sometimes I used to look back and wonder, how, how did she stay with me through all of that? I didn't want to go nowhere. I didn't want to do it. I would go to work and come home. Give her my paycheck. She was happy. Give, hey, babe, just go on. <laughs> do what you want to do. No, I ain't going to the mall with you. Don't spend it all. But ha yeah, there you go. I ain't want to go nowhere. Who wants to live like that all the time? I was so tormented in my mind. And I know that there are some in this room that are still stuck in certain places. And God comes to set you free today. Oh, we're going to get to the other part. We're going to get to the other part. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He spoke to me. I, 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 I could I, I, I leave and go. He, no, come on back. Okay, Lord. Okay. He, I'm like, all right, Lord. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, all, all throughout our lives, we, we go through things, and, and we have these different experiences. But those experiences we're having, it is to give us a unique expression, a unique experience. None of us are cookie cutter. None of us have the same lives. We may experience some of the same things, but, but, but we react to them and we respond to them differently. Why? Because you have your own life. You have your own unique expression. You have the people that God is going to use you to minister to once he delivers you. Amen. Yep. We can have the same life experiences, but yet all of us are to look exactly like Jesus in character, in attitude, and so forth. So that's why we have to meditate in the word. That's why we have to stay focused. That's why we have to live a disciplined life, a prayer life, being consistent and seeking him, getting in his presence. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you get in his presence, in the true authentic presence of almighty God, hallelujah, you do not come out the same. Think about Moses. When Moses went up to Mount Sinai, his face began to shine. Because even his molecular DNA structure was not the same. We have to find ourselves living in that place. We visit there. Visitation is great, but he's looking for habitation. Habitation. All throughout the day, walking with him, talking with him, communing, staying connected with him in the spirit. Glory to God. Having your steps ordered, having your life ordered. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Even in the hard places, thank you, Jesus. I may not understand, but thank you, Jesus. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Even in the process of getting this word, I was like, I don't understand, but I trust you, Lord. I've been walking with you long enough, God. I know that I'm just a vessel. I know that you're going to speak. I prepared my body. I prepared my mind. I don't understand this way, but I trust you, Lord. See, in order to really discover God's will and plan for your life, you really need a complete overhaul of your mind. He keeps dealing with his mind, and it's one of the things that the Lord spoke to me that he kind of he, he revealed to me. He said, if, if you don't renew your mind, and your mind is full of the world and carnality, when truth begins to speak to a lie, it will not receive it. You got, you're not going to cast down anything that you agree with. You're going to cast down that thing that you are in agreement with? 
The devil is a lie. You're going to embrace that thing wholeheartedly, and it will become a stronghold in your life. One of the things the Lord said to me, he said, son, the definition of, of a stronghold is a lie embraced as the truth. You can't move from that place until the light shines, until the glory comes, and he illuminates that place of darkness in your life or in your thinking. You will not move. Stronghold, solid, you stuck. You want to move, but your mind, ooh, you're saying move. I, nope. Until light comes, then breakthrough happens. Hallelujah. Then deliverance comes. You can begin to move when deliverance comes. When the deliverer shows up, he begins to equip you. He begins to quicken you. He begins to speak to you. Because now you begin to renew your mind and you recognize that, oh, this is truth talking to me. Glory to God. You're made in my image and after my likeness. Hallelujah. I created you with a plan and a purpose. My anointing is upon you. I'm sending you forth. Glory to God. I'm developing you. I'm preparing you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You begin to walk with him and talk with him. And he's telling you that you're my own. And I know your name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear me in this place. Glory to God. There's freedom in that. There's freedom in that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That is the place where the battle begins in your mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is so critical that we renew our minds because, again, an unrenewed mind is at war with God. It is a serious war raging. Hallelujah. Because God the Father is the Father of truth, and Satan is the Father of lies. Hallelujah. Two opposing kingdoms. <laughs> Hallelujah. So which one will you yield to? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As you renew your mind, you will begin to embrace the truth. You will begin to walk in the newness of life. You will begin to walk in the Zoe. I'm not saying that you won't experience challenges and trouble and adversity, because as long as we're in this body, we're going to go through something. Hallelujah. But the key word is going through. I didn't say stay in there. I didn't say get down in the pit and have a party and remain stuck. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because see, if you're in the pit, I'm not going to get in the pit with you. I'm going to help you get up out the pit. Glory to God. Get on up. Out. You can get up. You can walk. Stand strength to your legs. In the name of Jesus, get up from that low place. He didn't call you to be there. Now, I don't get out in the pit. No, been there, done that. No, that don't feel good. It hurt. Oh, Lord, I was there for too long. Lord, I ain't going. It, come on, I know how to get out. I'll help you get out. You don't want to get out right now? I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Some people ain't ready. <laughs> I ain't getting in there with you. <laughs> Y'all pray for Brother Greg. <laughs> I'll extend the right hand a fellowship. Come on up, brother. Come on up, sister. Come on up, son. Come on up, daughter. You don't want to get up? In Jesus' name, I'll be back. <laughs> I promise you I'll be back. I gone over there fast and pray. Lord, what are you saying? How do I get them out? Okay, that's what I do. Go back. All right, come on back over here. Man, you still over here? What the Lord said, you can get up. Get up! You ain't getting up? All right, I'll Lord, they said they ain't getting up. <laughs> I ain't greater than him. If you're not going to respond to his word, then who am I? See, sometimes I know I kind of feel like I'm all over the place. We have people in our lives that we know are making horrible decisions and they're about to experience something so traumatic 
and we're standing there, we're trying to intercede for them, and they're coming full steam ahead for this wall. And we're standing there like, if they don't slow down, they're going to hit the wall. But you're standing there, and a lot of us, we stand there, and we love them so much that we absorb all of the impact. Ooh. And we go and take ourselves through things that we were never ordained to go through. But I learned in my life the power of the wall. They're coming, and I'm saying, stop. Take the red pill. <laughs> and they just keep coming at full speed. Meet the wall. Boom. Wow. Now, I pray for them, Father, in the name of Jesus. I think they broke their hip, their big toe, their ankle. In the name of Jesus, be healed, be restored. Get up, bones, be healed in the name. Mine be. You ain't ready? All right. But that's a real live example. We're not God. We, we can't be God. We have to play our part. And be who it is that God called us to be in that situation. And sometimes you're just the voice of reason. You're the voice of God. You're there to bring comfort. You're there to bring godly counsel and wisdom. But if you, you they have a free will. And you know it's going to hurt. Because you stood there and you received that impact and that blow. And you took the pain that was meant for them. And they didn't learn nothing. Because you keep being their deliverer. So now you're receiving the punishment. You're receiving the pain because you refuse to get out of the way and let God have his way. Wall. It'll wake you up. Yes, it will. Oh, yes. How many of y'all have hit the wall before? Come on. I know I ain't alone. How many hit it two or three times? Did it wake you up? If it didn't, you hurt. You remembered the pain. You remembered, you remembered that experience. Yes, you did. Oh, glory to God. Ooh, just shudder thinking about it. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. So some of those people are stuck in that place in the carnal mind, and it's death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And always remember the carnal mind is the enmity against God, for it is not subject. Think about that. It is not subject. Something is not subject to the law of God, the carnal mind. It is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh, can't please God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I was before the Lord, the Lord began to speak to me and said, I come to disrupt the negative cycles in the life of my people, but they must commit their life, their mind, and their ways to me. It will not happen like you think, but I shall use an uncommon way to deliver you. There may be a great shaking or something unsettling in your life, but afterwards there will be a supernatural breakthrough that occurs. And when that fear comes, it will be arrested by the supernatural. He is coming to break up the negative cycles in your life. So yield to him. You've been holding on to it for far too long. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What are the cycles that have continuously held you back, that have kept you from the promises of God? He comes to break and destroy and disrupt that cycle in your life today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, Hallelujah, I will deliver you. I will create a new pattern for you to follow. Follow the example that I have set before you. In Proverbs 14 and 12, it says, There is a way that seems right unto a man, but its end is the way of death. 
Don't follow the familiar path, but follow the way of my spirit. I will take you in a way that you've never gone before, but you'll know it's me because you know my voice. Pray, 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 and pray some more, and enter into my presence with thanksgiving, and worship me. And as you worship, you shall be changed before people's very eyes. But I make a place of habitation, and I shall restore unto you the joy of your salvation. Hallelujah. Some that sit, that sit here today have become very weary in their spirits. Hallelujah. But that is not my will for you. So return unto me, and I shall restore all that the palmer worm and the canker worm have stolen from your life. Glory to God. Your strength is in my presence. So rejoice. Rejoice forevermore. And for some there shall be dancing, and some there shall be weeping. But I am come that you may have life and have that more abundantly. He says, I hold the times and the seasons in your life in my hand. Trust my timing. Wait upon me, and you shall know the hour and the very moment of my release. So rejoice. So rejoice. So rejoice. So rejoice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I have come with many blessings in my hand today. Receive by faith your miracle today. You can give me a little bit more of those strings. It helps to flow better. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord says, I come with many blessings in my hand. Now, whenever you, there's a prophetic word that goes forth, it requires faith. You have to receive it by faith. You have to, I'm surely as I'm standing here, the Lord began to speak to me. And he gave me certain people that I'm going to deliver that word to. And the ones that are not here, I'm going to release it so that they can listen to it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you this, that I am evolving, I'm developing, I'm growing in this gift. And I'm the kind of person that after I give this word, you come to me later and you say, brother, I felt like that was way in left field. That didn't apply to my life. I'll say, thank you, Lord. I will not take it personal. I, I won't. And you'll learn when I'm teaching about the prophetic in, the, in, in June, I, I'll share a lot with you. I'll share a lot with you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I say again, receive by faith your miracle today. I don't care whether it's physical, whether it's financial, whether it's relational. You know what you stand in need of. And the Lord said, I come with many blessings in my hand. He didn't even name them. So what do you need today? Lay hold of it by faith. This is a moment that you can receive it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many blessings in my hand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sarah, would you mind standing up, sister? He had me to write it down so I wouldn't forget. So if it don't, I'm going to read what the Lord said. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, Sarah, I've unlocked some giftings in you. But you've been hindered in moving forward because of a thought process. I see a pattern of going back and forth. You move forward, but then you stop, and you second-guess yourself. But God says, today, I set you free from this cycle. Glory to God. I see illustrations. I see an artistic gifting. I see designs and drawings of some sort. Oh, glory to God. I don't know what it is that you do, and you don't have to tell me right now. We can talk later. But I see that there's been a challenge. And the Lord says today, I come to set you free. Glory to God. So I want you to receive that word. 
Glory to God. It's a pattern. He said, I see you getting, it's like, it's like you're, you're, you're going and then you stop. And then sometimes you back up a little bit. You second guess yourself in whatever this area is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But he comes to disrupt that cycle in your life. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I see it in the area of business. Something either centered around, uh, it, it may even bring in another stream of income for you. Glory to God. And it may not just apply to one area of your life. Glory to God. So with the prophetic word, as you meditate on that word, as you allow it to marinate, God will begin to unlock and reveal. Anytime, when, when God is speaking like that, a lot of times it may not confirm something for you. It may unlock something for you. It may, it, it, I'm telling you, some people think, oh, when somebody comes with a prophetic word, it's always, no, the prophetic word does not always confirm. Sometimes he unveils. Glory to God. And, and allow the word to come forth and allow in, 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 in the time and in the season, it'll come to pass if it's from the Lord. Glory to God. Now, he put me in a position. I was like, Lord, you're going to put me out there like that? Okay. Glory to God. Elder Greenleaf. The Lord says, I'm giving you your heart's desire. He says, you just really want to be happy and trust again. God says, I'm erasing the pain. I'm healing the hurt. And he said, and you shall love again and trust again like never before. <laughs> Glory to God. Receive the word of the Lord, man of God. And you know, I love you. I love you. I love you. Glory to God. I love Elder Greenleaf. Not that I don't love nobody else. I do. I love a whole lot of y'all. But I love him like a father. There is something that's so fatherly and nurturing and loving about you. Every time I'm around you and in your presence, I hug you extra longer because I never knew what it felt like to hug a man and to have a man love me unconditionally. And I thank God for you having that kind of spirit and that kind of demeanor. I really, 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 really appreciate you, sir. More than you know. God bless you. God bless you. I know this is a little unusual and a little different, but if I can just flow how the Lord, I'm going to keep my eyes on that time. Glory to God. Now, yesterday we met with a Agape Church, and we have some guests here in the house, and we have, they called her Pastor Davis and her husband, uh, Deacon, Deacon Davis, right? Amen. Well, as I was before the Lord, the Lord really began to speak to me about you all. And I want to share with you what the Lord placed upon my heart. And again, if it does not apply, if it's not applicable, I'm, I'm strong enough for you. Like, hey, brother, keep on praying. I, yeah, I am. I am. I am. I am. Hallelujah. So, Pastor Donna Davis and your husband, if you'll please stand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Man, he got me way out here. <laughs> God says, I'm redeeming the time, and I'm restoring all things. Glory to God. It seems that there has been a long journey that you've been on. God is taking you in an unusual way, and it has not gone like you thought it would. And you've questioned some things that have happened. And God says, it wasn't my perfect will but I shall restore and break all hindrances. Glory to God. God says there's a new liberty that's coming to your life and your ministry. I shall cause a refreshing and an understanding to come into your lives. God is also moving to cause a greater bond here. Glory to God. A greater bond. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he told me, and I don't know what it means, he said to bless your marriage. Not saying that there's anything wrong, but I bless your marriage in the name of Jesus. May the bond be stronger than ever before. And may the Lord give you a refreshing and a restoration as he has already decreed. And may your ministry be blessed. And may your heart's desire come forth in fullness in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. 
My dear sister Nancy. Lord got me way out here. <laughs> Y'all keep praying now. Don't stop praying and watch. Your participation is to pray for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Nancy, it wasn't long. It wasn't lengthy. It wasn't all that deep to me. But this is what the Lord said. He said, when he gives you revelation, release it. I kind of felt like he was saying. He said, when he gives you revelation, release it. He said, the timing will be right because you will have the witness of my spirit, says the Lord. I believe God is going to begin to give you supernatural insight. I know a little bit about what you do because I participated. But I feel like God is even going to give you greater insight and there are going to be some other relationships and other people that he's going to be a, bring alongside you. And there's an acceleration that's coming to what you're doing. And there's increase. So everybody point your hands at Nancy. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, accelerate, accelerate what you're doing in her life and what you're doing in her ministry and what you're doing in her business. Accelerate it, God. God, breathe on it. Breathe on it. Release your glory on it. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we decree and declare great success over the work of her hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. As I was sitting there before the Lord, I felt like he brought up to me, and I don't know, the person may be here, they may not be here, but he said that there's somebody that deals with migraines or headaches. Is there anyone in here that deals with migraines or headaches? You do? Two, three, okay. And Pastor Will, this is where you come in. The Lord told me to have Pastor Will to lay hands on him. So if you all will stand, that raised your hand, Pastor Will, I'm just, I'm, I'm just a messenger. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know why he's doing it this way. I'm just going how he's going. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Lord also revealed to me that there are some people that are struggling to get rest at night. You're tossing and you're turning and your mind is racing and full of thoughts. Hallelujah. Struggling to get sleep at night. Struggling to rest. I don't know who you are. But receive the peace of God in Jesus' name. Don't seem like nothing is happening because this is spiritual. It's not all dramatic. People not falling out. But I tell you this. Things are changing. Yokes are being destroyed. Burdens are being removed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Whatever it is that you stand in need of, he said, I come with many blessings in my hand. Maybe he didn't give me your name. Maybe he didn't give me your pain. But you know it greater than anybody. Give it to him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Yeah, receive sweet sleep. He said, I give my beloved sweet sleep. Rest in him. Rest in his presence. Put on some instrumental praise and worship. And begin to sleep in the presence of Almighty God. Begin to sleep in the glory of God. Play the word. Hallelujah. You'll have some of the best sleep that you ever had in your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a few more people that I want to share with what the Lord placed upon my heart. And the next person is not here, but his wife is here. Cassie, if you will stand for your husband, Jason.
Unless I just didn't see him, I don't think he's here today, is he? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jason Betts. Hallelujah. I see an award ceremony of some sort. I see you on the stage being recognized for your work and for your efforts. I see a big smile on your face as you feel a sense of accomplishment. There have, there have been some delays in the things that you have desired. But I see an acceleration as it relates to this. He says, I see some suddenly happening in your life. Glory to God. He said, don't be moved by false witnesses and haters and naysayers. I feel like God is going to prove them wrong. That's what I kind of feel like when I was getting it, that he has some false witnesses and some people that may be speaking behind his back and some haters and some naysayers. But God says, I'm going to prove them wrong. Ah, it's you next. He spoke to me about you right after he spoke about your husband. <laughs> so keep standing for yourself now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Glory to God. Cassie, 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 Cassie. The Lord says, this is just the beginning of your elevation. Even as it relates to your business, paparazzi. He says, expect a call or some news very soon. Hallelujah. I sense that someone has really been observing you. There's somebody in the hierarchy or the leadership of this company that's really been observing you. So the Lord said, expect a phone call and some news very soon. But the elevation doesn't just relate to your business. It also relates to your ministry. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So receive. Receive the elevation. Receive the acceleration. Receive the recognition. Hallelujah. As they've been observing you, it's really God saying, I've been observing you. I've been watching you, daughter. And it's nothing like hearing your daddy say, <laughs> my good and faithful servant, He's well pleased. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. And I feel like I'm supposed to lay hands. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you for my sister. Y'all point to our hands. Y'all participate too. God, I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing in her life. I thank you for what you're doing in her ministry. And Father, impart unto her the strength and the wisdom that she needs, God. I thank you for keeping her grounded, and I thank you for keeping her humble, God, as she humbles herself under the mighty hand of God. I thank you that you will exalt her in due season, and I thank you for the acceleration on their lives, and we decree this blessing over their lives and over their home and over their seed. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank God, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. Lakeisha, did I get that right? You know, sometimes I can mess it. Lakre okay, there you go. See, I that's the way it came to me. I knew he was talking about you, though. I saw your face. I told you, see, y'all ain't praying, 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 praying. Hallelujah. Wow. This has been a very interesting and trying season for you. But the Lord says, I have you in the center of my hand. <laughs> what seems to be adversity has been a developmental process for you. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this was the part that really got me. He says, I'm teaching you to trust me when you can't even see your way. Glory to God. So in this season, 
where it seemed like it's been a lot of pain, it's been a lot of adversity, and I don't know because we don't talk like that. And, but uh, he said, I'm developing you, my daughter. He says, I have you in the center of my hand. And that is the safest place. To, it, you may not feel safe. You may feel, but he says, I have you in the center of my hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I bless you in Jesus' name, you and your beautiful family, in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Woo, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I think I messed this other name up too. But this is for Brother Troy and his wife. And I, always, I don't know why I always mess your name up. Look at that. Hold on. There's Lakeisha. Lakeisha. And I had Tanisha by me. There's Tanisha in there. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Man, I told y'all I'm developing it. And, I'm, and see, I'm, I'm confident enough in my God where even if it's way, I'm, I trust him. He put me out here. I, I, my flesh didn't want to do it. I was like, okay, Lord, I ain't never really stepped out like that for real. Like, you know, some, sometimes it's a little different, but praise the Lord. And maybe he's modeling with me because we're all moving into a season. See, where you're, you're seeing a demonstration of the very same thing that you can do. There's nothing special about me other than I yield to him and I spend a lot of time praying in the Holy Ghost, edifying myself. And then that gift begins to open up. As you see that, that when you go in this, that's the doorway. When you go in the spirit and you begin to pray, things begin to open up. Hallelujah. You begin to sensitize your spirit. And sometimes you don't trust what you're hearing. You don't trust what you're seeing. Now he gave me all these people. I don't know all the, I ain't going to nobody Facebook. I, ain't look, I, don't, I don't even know if you had that stuff out there. Matter of fact, sis, I don't even think you have a Facebook page, do you? Troy and Lakeisha. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, <coughs> I, the, the Lord brought you all before me, and what I began to see, he said, you all have given, given, and given. But God says, now it's time to receive. God says, I'm sending people into your lives to be a blessing. He says, some of these relationships will be unexpected, but know that I am sending them with wisdom and resources to impart unto you and into you. So there are going to be some relationships and some connections, and I see increase as it relates to you both individually. There is going to be increase that comes to your life, and these relationships are going to play a vital part in that because they're going to impart some wisdom, and they are going to be some resources and things that they give you, some informational and some monetarily. Hallelujah, glory to God. But this is your season of increase in your lives. You so much. You so much. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And God is breaking some hindrances. God is breaking some things that have been held up. Glory to God. You watch. He's going to do it. Hallelujah. And I bless your lives. I bless your marriage. I bless your home. May the anointing of the Lord God. God, we thank you. We thank you for what you're doing in their lives. We thank you, Lord, not just for the financial increase, but the increase in their lives spiritually, the increase in their relationship, the peace in their home. Restoration and healing take place now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we decree the blessing of the Lord over their lives, over their homes. In Jesus' mighty name, 